Hey guys, the Tech Prepper, hope you're all doing well. So this is gonna be a raw, unedited video. I wanna share with you a little research and development project I'm working on. I have just finished up some work on offline HF prediction using a tool called VOACAP. Works pretty well, but that's mostly based on statistical models that take into account your location, another location, the sunspot, smoothing numbers, uh, output power, antennas, a whole bunch of stuff. And I thought, you know what, we might be able to have more realistic uh, HF prediction by using real-time data. One of the things I love doing is working on WinLink and sending email over HF without any type of grid tie to someone like my wife who doesn't care about this amateur radio nerd stuff. The hard part is WinLink usually sorts things based on proximity to your current location. And for HF, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is what I'm thinking right now, just out loud, and this will be kind of a long video. I'm on the 20 meter band right now, and I set a heartbeat out, and I got a couple of stations, or three stations got back to me, and it looks like there's a station, Kilo 5, Victor Papa Pa, or Victor Papa. So I'm gonna open up my offline, off-grid call sign lookup, and it was Victor 5, or no, Kilo 5, Victor Papa. And what we notice right now is that he's a distance, his name is Kevin, of 1,348 miles. In fact, we will go hide this and we will back out a little bit. And we can actually see how far we are. So my signal is going from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way out here, and it's going out to Tennessee. So what I was thinking of is we can use that information to find windlink stations that are in the Tennessee area to make this happen. So K5VP, I'm gonna look him up one more time. So let me go ahead and reset this search. We'll do K5VP, hit enter. And what I want here is the latitude and longitude. So it's a 36 degrees latitude and minus 88 degrees. So I have this little script that I wrote here and a full uh, offline Windlink index that I just created, and we want to put in 36 degrees of latitude minus 88 degrees of longitude. We're on the 20 meter band, and then we want to enter in our mode. And for the mode, uh, let's go ahead and type in VARA. And what my program does is it is using this station out here in Tennessee, searching for a 300 mile radius, and then finding the closest station. So the closest station here is K4MSU, and uh, we should be able to, hopefully we can hit them, so K4MSU. All right, K4MSU, and we can actually see where K4MSU is located rel relative to K4. MSU relative to that Tennessee station. It should be within 300 miles of that. And we can see that it's Kentucky. So pretty close. So at this point now, what I want to do is close JSA call. I can only do one mode at a time. We are going to go and open up WinLink on VARA. And I'm going to select WinLink VARA HF, and it should launch the VARA HF application as well as Pat Winlink. And now what I want to do is go to Action Connect, and I want to make sure that we've got VARA HF set as the transport. We want to show the RMS list, and we want to make sure that we are filtering by VARA HF, and the band is going to be the 20 meter band. And you'll, as you'll notice here, the closest station to me is 71 kilometers, but for 20, I'll skip right over them. In fact, most of these guys here. So I'm gonna do a search again. Let me see here, I forgot the call sign. It is K4MSU. So I'm gonna search for, oh, come on guys. All right, we're still gonna go through with this guy. Sorry about that. So. We will do VARA HF. I will hit Control F and search for K4. You gotta love freaking Pat, man. Or uh, 
<laughs> live demos. Let's do that one more time. Action. Oh, come on. Action, connect. And I want to search for... This nerd stuff drives me crazy, guys. K4MSU. Okay. And we can see here he's 2,100 kilometers away from us. So we will click on that guy. And then we're going to go ahead here and see if we can connect. So I'm going to rewrite all of this stuff too to make it easier to use. It should have changed frequencies for us. So now we're on the VAR frequency. And my hope here is that we're actually able to connect to this station. Let me turn on the volume here. And I'm only running, I believe, 40 watts, 40 watts. And I think we're connected. Yep, I think we got it, guys. Yep, check that out. We are connected. We're going to let this one go just for a little bit. I want one cut of all of this here. All right, so we connected to the station here. We can see that uh, we're getting into his gateway. It looks like it's at Murray State University. So just for food for thought, guys, what I want to do with everything I'm doing is multiple different techniques that embrace no internet, 100% off-grid techniques, off-grid tooling, and that's why I have quit my job and why I'm doing all of this. It's freaking exciting. So apologies for how shaky this video is, but I wanted to capture everything in the moment here. So uh, if you guys like what I'm doing, uh, again, I hate asking for help, but uh, please consider me over on the Buy Me A Coffee side. I'll put the support link, and I plan to make this integration, not have all of this nerd stuff. While this is helpful for development, I am gonna integrate it into the application. So all you have to do is uh, hit the heartbeat on JSA call. It'll plop it on the map. Click find nearby Windlink stations. It'll give you a list. Click on that. It populates the Windlink client. You're off to the races. So whether you're working the 12 meter band, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, uh, 75 or 80, it really doesn't matter. The goal is to use all of these offline techniques to our benefit. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.